top 50 new PC games of 2024. So I assume Dragon's Dogma will be on this. Elden Ring DLC does that count? I feel like it should be on this. Black Myth Wukong will be on this. 2024 has a ton of incredible new PC games to play. Hi, folks. Oh, the game ranks, the top actually, yeah, there are other new ones. PC games I don't know. Of Starting off got for with it. number 50, it's Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl. Now, this is a first-person shooter. It brings in survival horror. I don't think RPG this elements. is my if kind of game. If you're familiar with the original, you know exactly what it is. Except, this one builds on what they did in the original, which had a little bit more linear of a structure and gives us a, a, a big old open world. The zone is a great place to make an open world in. It's a radioactive wasteland teeming with anomalies and mutants. Obviously, the graphics are significantly better than Stalker 1. The original came out in 2007. And Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl is coming September 5th, and I couldn't be more excited to play it. And number 49 this is, is Metal Gear Solid King. Delta Snake Eater, a remake that tells us it's going to be incredibly faithful and even uses yeah. the original voice cast and recordings from the original game, which I think is the exact right way to go. The performances in the original are fantastic. Why not have them? That's cool. It's also obviously a huge update in terms of graphics, probably layouts, probably gameplay, but it's apparently a faithful retelling of the original game, and I can't wait to play it. I mean, we don't have a release very... date, but it is coming this year. I would imagine November, December. That seems like a busy time of the year release if I've ever seen one, so stay tuned. And I look at these graphics and it's crazy. Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. You should check out that game. I've thoroughly enjoyed it so far. Is it a, like a JRPG? Number 48, it's Prince of Persia The Lost Crown. Kind of crazy that unlike Man, its predecessor... I haven't played platformer in so long. It's the return to the beloved franchise is more of a platformer and this puzzler does look than cool, though. most of these games have been for quite a while. In a lot of ways, it feels like a kind of follow-up to the more original Prince of Persia type of game, except it brings in a lot more Metroidvania type stuff. You have the non-linear kind of... 2D equivalent of open world exploration. It's got some pretty sweet movement. And it's got that kind of parkour style movement with pretty acrobatic combat. I, I think it's a pretty darn fun game. It's already out. Highly recommend picking it up. Wait, and is covering games that are already out? I don't think Seven so. Senua's Saga Hellblade 2, the sequel to the critically acclaimed original game. It's a dark Hellblade. fantasy action adventure that follows up on everything we learned about Senua, the Celtic warrior, in the first game. Basically, it promised... Uh, like, I don't know why, but this game creeps me out so much that makes me uncomfortable to see it, even, like, in trailers sometimes. It looks very well made. It's just so... So, so well made that it creeps me out, maybe. This is to expand pretty too creepy, largely on too what immersive. we saw in the first game. Of course, it was very successful. It made the studio, which is very small, a ton of money. And if you remember, the first game did a really good job of exploring themes of mental illness and resilience and overcoming things despite big odds. It, it was a really good game. And it'll be exciting to play Senua's Saga mm. Hellblade 2 when it comes out May 21st. At number 46, Dune Awakening is going to be an open world survival MMO. So you can kind of assume that you're going to see your resource management and base building uh, and a whole lot of Dune. Obviously, it takes place on the harsh deserts of Arrakis. You got big old sandworms. You got a ton of sandstorms. Rival factions vying for control of that sweet, sweet spice. The stuff necessary mm. to travel at hyperspeeds. There is not a release date yet for Dune Awakening, but it is said to be coming out in 2024. So little, developments here will be very little interesting wings. to see. On the, whatever that and is. And number 45 is Crimson Desert. <gasps> an open Ooh, I, I'm interested in this one, actually. This was announced like a while ago, but I feel like this would be a good game. Adventure game blending elements of medieval history and fantasy 
set on the continent of Piwell and focusing on the story of somebody he named Duff, a mercenary leader, attempting to reclaim his land and protect his uh, people. It's basically, in some ways, Look a bit of a follow-up to Black Desert Online. However, it's a single-player focus Look experience with an emphasis on storytelling and character development. Uh, that's obviously a this big world. difference from Black Desert Online. But it was originally developed as a follow-up directly to Black Desert Online. It does look like there's going to be some pretty cool <laughs> combat, um, both on foot and on mount, so and cool. a lot of different activities from hunting to trading. We don't have this a release date, so but... Uh, <gasps> Doesn't that donkey look just like the donkey from Shrek? Too similar. Can we pet the donkey? Yeah, it looks like you can pet the dog. Can we pet the donkey, though? Look at the sheep! I know, so many animals! They're just like vibing. Donkey! <laughs> yeah, Four 10 out of 10. <gasps> it, so you can we'll pick keep... up a cat, you can wear a cute hat. I mean, it's sad how this is made, but that's... Come on, you can have animal ears. That's adorable. Get in the loop. And number 44 okay, is... Okay, I, I will play this game. <laughs> activities from hunting to trading i we will play this state, game but, uh, you can pat the dog is you can pick up the cat we'll see it so we'll keep you Bruh. in the loop and number 44 I'm is in. elden ring shadow of the, Earth Tree, um, the highly anticipated expansion to the critically acclaimed and beloved elden ring a uh, new chapter in the game saga which is going to take us all on a journey beyond the lands between uh, so we're going to see a lot of new territory and obviously a lot of fresh lore. Right. Elden Ring has an intricate mythology to it. Um, and obviously, as an expansion, this will expand that. Uh, that. Creepy, but though. we also expect to see new enemies, bosses, characters, stories, all oh, sorts cool. of challenges. Um, Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree is landing on June 20th, so keep your eyes peeled. And number 43 is Hades 2, the sequel to the critically acclaimed Ooh, Hades. dungeon crawler. This game I tried to... playing Hades and I'm terrible at it. I want to give it another try, but I am all for Hades art. It's so, so stunning. You're giving us a, a bit of a fresh twist on, on the formula. I this look forward around, to we are seeing some of you guys play this too. The princess of the underworld taking on uh, our own journey. Totally different. New gods, new enemies, new environments. And as with the first, probably expanded to at least some extent. This makes um, me want to try the dynamic again. story elements. I'm excited. Obviously, this game has a really cool art style. So cool. Super Giant the Games coolest. never let us astray the, the path. So I'm excited. We don't have a release date, but it's coming this year. So big hell yeah to Hades too. Yeah. And number 42 is The First so Descendant, a free-to-play third-person co-op free action play? RPG set in a fantasy world where you, as a descendant with unique abilities and powers, has to defend your world from an alien threat. Whoa. This is a really pretty-looking game. Uh, it's what? running on Unreal this Engine so 5. Cool. This is it's got PvE, PvP, and honestly, action RPGs aren't typically co-op, so I think that's an interesting spin on the formula. We don't have a release date for The oh, First right. Descendant, but it is coming this year. Stay tuned. This looks so cool. What the heck? And number 41 is Star Wars Outlaws. And I wonder how co-op and everything works for that. I think there was a beta for this. Really? Hades can be tough, but it's one of my favorites. I hope you consider revisiting. Yeah, I have it. I've tried it, but I forget everything about it. And I know that there is like good stories and good characters too along the way that you get to learn more about their stories. So, if... Like, I revisit it, I'll probably do it, like, start, like, a new file completely. Although I know that it's roguelike and it's different every run, but still. Action adventure game. Uh, the first from Ubisoft. Oh, Maybe no. not the last, because it's definitely an intriguing title. In a lot of ways, looks kind of like 1313 was supposed to look. Is except for it's not set on oh. Coruscant. It's going to be across various planets. I In love the character, ways, the main character that they creative for this game she looks so so cute reminds me of uncharted there's stealth exploration combat and of course narrative i'm excited for it it looks really cool i hope it delivers because uh it's one of those games where i yeah. look at it and i'm like this would be great. i love the little guy that follows her i really want to play it but if it turns out not to be good <sighs> it's gonna be a real it big suck. i have high him! expectations though so i'm excited to play star wars Listen, Outlaws. i know I that cute cute thing in the game isn't everything obviously but it helps 
It helps. Again, no release date. Uh, stay tuned. It is coming this year, though. <gasps> Little guy. I don't and know. It's like a axolotl puppy or something, it looks like. At number 40 is Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, an action this adventure one game really, set really in the good. 1930s. What could very easily be a Tomb Raider or an Uncharted style game is actually not. It's a first person game. Very interesting looking, very different. First person whipping, whipping good. Uh, also, lots of <laughs> intricate puzzles, apparently. But I, I don't really like first player, fir first person play, uh, games. Gives me motion sickness. It, it does look cool, though. It looks like a movie, except for the people's faces, right? I think very interesting uh, blend of exploration, storytelling, and, of course, Puzzles cinematic like crap, because it's Indiana Jones. That's so Again, cool. no release date, so you're going to have to so uh, wait on that, but I have a feeling it's going to be worth it. It is landing this year. Hopefully, the circle is so very great. So many new games this year. And number 39 is Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, an action RPG that expands on the grand blue fantasy universe from free to play web-based thing into console gaming this is a much more mm. serious entry as far as i'm concerned you got real-time combat you got beautiful graphics stuff you just haven't seen from what is i mean for what it is a pretty cool thing platinum games had some hand in the development earlier on yasuyuki kaiji uh who works for platinum games remained the director even after platinum games stopped working on the game as a company so i mean that input is still there in my so is this game kind of like final fantasy where it's like turn-based and it has like a story that you play through no how does it work action combat oh so you you gotta move around and hit them oh well, that's cool, because it looks like you have multiple characters in the team, so maybe kind of like how pawns work in Do Dragon's Dogma. They also kind of like fight with you like that. Maybe? My opinion. It's definitely an interesting game. Definitely worth checking out. Hmm. Highly recommend it. Big I haven't bosses. beaten it yet, but I, I do enjoy it. Definitely worth your time if you like really? a, a good JRPG slash action RPG. It's kind of both in certain ways. And number 38... You have three AI control characters, but you can play with others too. Gotcha. Is the Silent Hill 2 remake a That's highly a anticipated game. reimagining of the classic survival horror game? This remake um, by Bloober Team aims no. to keep the essence of the original, but update it in the same way Resident Evil has been updated. The older games have turned into the remakes, which are very good games. As such, you're going to be stepping into the shoes of James Sunderland. You're going to be looking for your deceased wife. And you're going to uncover a lot of dark secrets. Unsettling Ooh, secrets. That's creepy. We don't have oh a release gosh. date on this, but it's highly anticipated. I know that there's a lot of varied opinions, but this is such it's a scary. beloved game. And frankly, a lot of what it seems like they're trying to do uh, is the right stuff, in my opinion. I'm going to be positive about it until there's a reason not to be. I haven't seen uh, anything that makes me go, oh, well, they're definitely screwing this up. So I'm looking forward to finding out uh, when it comes out so I can play it. It is coming this year. So I'm keep looking forward peeled. to the next one that you're going to show me. And number 37 is Ara History Untold, a turn-based strategy game that brings us grand strategy, historical simulation, mixes it up and uh -huh. gives us something that's hopefully going to be interesting and new. You're going to be making decisions that alter the course of human civilization, basically creating your own version of human oh, history. Cool. You got all of the landmark strategy stuff, diplomacy. Yeah, Diplomacy, strategy game. research of technology, empire building, wow, etc. So cool it looks really cool. It's landing sometime this year, allegedly fall. So we'll let wow, you know when there's a firmer release date for our history. Statue of Liberty. And number 36 is Lost Soul Aside, an action RPG, clearly inspired by both Final Fantasy and Devil May Cry. I think particularly inspired wow. by Final Fantasy wow, XV. Cool. I think it's reasonable to assume we're going to see more Final Fantasy style games with Devil May Cry style mm. fighting. Because as much controversy as Final Fantasy XVI kicked up, it's a pretty damn good game, honestly. And I think that it's going to be looked back on more fondly than it was received initially in zoom uh, zoom by a lot of people man. lost soul aside zoom zoom. it's not game of thrones final fantasy it's definitely final fantasy 15 final fantasy whatever the hell you want to call that i'm looking forward to it personally if if they pull it off i think it's a good idea there is no release date yet but lost soul man. aside is supposed to come in 2020 like the thing is also each one of these games i assume they take 
there are big games. You're gonna take so much time to play through. How does one play all the games that they want to play nowadays? At number 35 like is cool Warhammer boss. 40k Space Marine 2, the long-awaited sequel to the action-packed third-person shooter. Too many games, not enough time, for real. First world problem, for real. Building on the foundation of its predecessor, obviously enhanced graphics. It's been a while. Uh, and allegedly a deeper narrative. Honestly, it's Warhammer 40k Space Marine. It's another one of those. Uh, it's Ooh, a sequel to a game that came out in 2011. And there's a whole lot of stuff that is probably going to be added to it, knowing that. But Whoa. with the 2011 game as a foundation, I think pretty strong Whoa. possibilities here. Warhammer Ooh, 40k Space lot. Marine 2 is landing on September 9th. <laughs> Why is it like a fountain? And number 34 is Tekken 8. As the bird that did Tekken. the before you buy this out? game. Uh, definite thumbs up here. Tekken 8 continues the saga of the you Mishima need it. clan. It's got insane graphics. Like insane graphics. And it just, it, it brings the combat to another new level. I didn't notice uh, Street Fighter, the recent one that came out. It was on sale a few days ago. And I was kind of tempted. I've never played actual fighting game with like proper two bars i've only played like smash bros <laughs> and that doesn't count right so uh, i've not played it but i really like jewelry she's so cool i wanna i, I she, 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 jewelry is so cool you know i want to learn to play jewelry honestly and people kick Culture, thank you. I would highly recommend watching the Before You Buy We Did of This. There's way too much to talk about in like a 30 second slot, but it is a game that vastly deserves the praise and attention that Tekken 7 maybe didn't completely deserve and kind of left people wanting, you know? Tekken 8 is fantastic. I love Tekken 8. Buy it, play it. That simple. At number 30. But man, like I was watching, they recently had like the the million dollar tournament, right? On Street Fighter. And I was watching a little bit of it. And it looks so cool too then too. Fun fact, Jewelry won this year. Yeah, I watched it. Let's go. People kick girl. Yeah. Greatest character in fighting game history. Yes, sir. Oh, this Manor one. Lords if you like strategy game, this game looks really cool coming strategy game one of those combos of the city building the resource management and the tactical warfare types of course medieval manor lords it's set in a, a feudal setting so now what yeah. sets it apart i think is the way that it emphasizes organic growth based on the player's decisions and the landscape there's also these very large scale battles that look pretty damn cool in terms of not only spectacle but strategic planning troop management all, all the depth to the game it looks like a really good game manor lords is landing on april 26th <gasps> what that's so soon and number 32 is hollow knight silk hey, song a highly anticipated i don't think it's gonna happen do you think hollow knight's gonna come out this year <laughs> i don't think it's gonna come out this year Honestly, I kind of want to try playing Hollow Knight again before this comes out. I played to beat the game, but I'm pretty sure there were a lot of like after that point that I could still do. But I I really want to re-experience everything from the start because I don't remember everything very well. So I want to play through it again, but it's going to be such a struggle to... 2024, yeah, I don't think it's gonna come out. I don't think so. Quickly acclaimed Hollow Knight, an action adventure side scrolling Metroidvania. Uh, put in some way. different shoes. Hornet, the uh, princess protector way. of Hollow Nest, has to explore a completely new kingdom. And along Man, with that, it was she so has fun though. I really do want to revisit it. Man, not enough time. Different mechanics, new acrobatic really abilities, to. and in every way, it do. looks like a big expansion on what Hollow Knight did. I'm excited to play Silk Song. It doesn't have a release date, but it's landing sometime in 2024. Really? Are you sure? Sometime 2024. Has that been said? Bafanada. <laughs> I didn't hear anywhere it confirming. Yeah, I don't think that's confirmed. I think that's 
Hope. And number 31 is Persona Hope 3 you. Reload. Another game, your favorite game. Bird did the before you buy for. Definitely recommend watching that video. Again, this is a pretty big... This is big a series that I'm so scared to get into because I feel like it's going to take eternity to play a single one. Game, it is in terms Magna of loves the this, yeah. last three numbered entries of Persona. Not the most expansive, uh, but that doesn't mean you're not going to be spending tens of hours with it. This is essentially the game that established the formula followed pretty faithfully by Persona 4 and 5. It's updated in terms of visuals and some mechanics to match along with Persona 5 a little bit more, and I really think it benefits from it. Persona 3 Reload is very, very good. Probably the best way you have to experience Persona 3 currently. I do have some hope that they add in some of the content they didn't include, but all of that is true nonwithstanding. Definitely pick this one up. And number 30 is Dragon Age Dreadwolf, the next chapter in the Dragon Age series. I mean, this is a great Bioware mm. RPG series. We're fine. Players on Dragon Age is good, too. Not played any of their games, though. Not a fan of personal games. Personally, though, for anime fans, I can see, yeah, definitely. Keeping an eye on this one. Oh, so many games. Story of Solus, the enigmatic Dreadwolf. And, of course, that means deep storytelling character Story. study, and obviously strategic combat. Dragon Age has never been one to hold back on the political intrigue. I expect that to be back. We don't have a release date for it yet, but it is coming 2024. I mean, this is going to be huge. And number 29 is Ark 2, the sequel to the popular survival game, Ark Survival Evolved. <gasps> Basically, is that Dodo Bird? The intent is to take Survival Kinda Evolved and Evolve it, bringing the whole survival bird. with dinosaurs and other ancient creatures and stuff like that, allegedly to new heights. We'll see. Um, no. I think it's going to be a cool game. Got vastly improved graphics. Can you ride um, on the dino? Ecosystems, no way. That AI, looks so cool. Et cetera, et cetera. All the types of stuff you would expect. We don't have a release date, but Arc 2 is going to cool. land sometime this year. We'll let you know as soon as we know more. That's so cool. And number 28 is Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown. Bringing the franchise back, throwing down a pretty cool open a world. A racing game. Uh, I'm not really into racing games. Pretty much Mario Kart is all the racing I would do. Ark was cool. Lots of fun things you could do. Ah. I mean, that's so cool. You can ride on the dino too. Scale replica of Hong Kong Island. In terms of... I wonder if... Like, I also know that there's a game like... Like, uh, you fly an airplane around the world. I think they kind of are, are like similar audiences. People who like that one will like the driving, vice versa. But I do want to try the drive the airplane one. Yeah, that one. <laughs> Microsoft Flight Simulator. Freedom of an exploration. Uh, they're promising unparalleled, but in, in terms this of, does look you know, cool Test Drive actually. Unlimited is a good series. Supposedly, the point of this is uh, immersing yourself in I think it culture. depends on the space you get to drive around, how how cool it looks. The experience can be changed. Through this Solar Crown competition, we don't have an exact date for it, but it is coming this year. Look out. And number 27 is Enshrouded, a survival game that is currently in early access. It's a co-op survival action RPG set in a kind of mysterious and eerie setting with exploration and puzzle solving as its focus. It's a game that's been pretty damn well received, got really good visuals, really good sound design, very positive reviews. I was looking at this game and I was thinking Dragon's Dogma too, <laughs> to be honest. A lot of these games coming out around the same time i feel like the competition is so strong but i mean they can do their own thing but this game looks cool but in my mind i'm like oh if i'm gonna play dragon's dogma i probably won't check this out i noticed myself thinking that and to assume you'll have a good time with it if it sounds good it's pretty much delivered unless on they have like a distinctive story i don't know what it sets out to do i would say go give it a shot i've had some fun with it not very convincing either. <laughs> Go give it a shot. It's kind of fun. And number 26 is Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, a series that, with its last entry, went full JRPG. This is continuing that lineage. Um, wow, is this a quirky game. And not in like a, ah, oh, it's so quirky. I mean, like, <laughs> these are legitimately bizarre and strange games that are okay. extremely engaging, mm. massively fun. It, it's interesting because like a dragon is so bizarre, yeah. <laughs> you agree with this person? 
because it's mostly a JRPG, but there's elements of that beat em up style combat that are brought back up in different tire. contexts. If you like weird JRPGs, this is the best place to go for that. <laughs> also, if you just enjoy the Yakuza series, I think everything that makes Yakuza. I think you're going to find yourself in like a ridiculous situations in this game. Looks like. Good is also still here. I had a hell of a lot of it's fun tired. with Like a Dragon in yeah. Again, I'm pretty sure I did that before you it's buy this one, so go back and watch that for more thoughts. I had a hell of a time with this game. I think you yeah, will this too. This is quirky. And That's number 25 is Hyper Light Breaker, which I'm going to say what Hyper Light Drifter is to Legend of Zelda Link into the Past. Hyper Light Breaker looks very much like it is to Breath of the Wild. Um, hey. It looks very much like it takes exactly what i described and made it very oriented towards roguelike stuff you got biomes random generation breath of the wild roguelike how some of the uh traversal stuff you'll recognize from solar ash they actually built this game on top of that solar ash cool. uh, but it also looks very reminiscent in terms of the combat and movement of hyper light drifter i'm quite excited about it that's I a love cool like mo moving Ability to travel. Now here's Breath of the Wild. <laughs> I still have to play uh, Tears of the Kingdom. I have it. I'm still gonna keep my mind open and get into it when I'm ready for it. But the review for it seems so mixed. Some people love it. Some people are so disappointed. I loved Breath of the Wild. So I don't know where I will be sitting with my opinion on the game when I play Tears of the Kingdom. Solar Ash and Hyper Light Drifter. Big into those games. We don't know when this is coming out, but it is coming this year. We'll keep you in the loop. And number 24 is the Gothic the 1 loop. remake. The original Gothic is getting a remake. I, I mean, this game came out in 2001. It's a classic action RPG. It's also like jank central. Wow. And something that remakes Apple. the essence of the original, giving us better graphics, um, a more accessible user interface, and perhaps uh, less jank. Do you just pick fights in this game? Honestly, like I say that kind of hesitantly because the jank is part of what makes gothic gothic i mean i'm kind of excited to see a remake to gothic like i really like piranha <laughs> bites games but i also you're really just picking fights in this game i have my own beef with them Shot there's people, aspects of piranha people. bites games i just do not what? like but there's a lot of aspects of them that i do so i'm interested just in seeing what a 2024 well, gothic a cool even is honestly setting. we don't have a release date but it's coming this year so stay tuned at number 23 is Phantom Blade Zero, an action RPG. A little bit faster paced than a Souls-like might Whoa. typically be, so I'm not necessarily putting it in that Whoa. category. It is a bleak-looking game with some very interesting artistic ideas. What do they it's, mean, bleak-looking? Like, it doesn't look good? It's a semi-open world game, not a full-on open world it looks game. looks good You're going to have some me. pretty linear stuff in it and some semi-open stuff. Once again, stuff. let me turn off the blood. Bleak meaning depressing. Oh, oh, I can see that. Bleak is in dark and hopeless. Oh. Maybe sort of Uncharted 4-like. I don't know. It's an interesting looking one. I don't want to say it defies categorization because, I mean, look at it. You know I what? love like old, old Asia setting. It's just the clothes and the buildings. They're just so beautiful this game is from this footage or at least you know as much as i know we know what we're looking at it looks fun unfortunately we don't have a release date so uh we can't play it but it is coming this year and number 22 is path of exile 2 mm -hmm. a sequel to the popular action rpg this looks like they are attempting to set a uh That's grittier crazy. darker improved idea set 20 years after the events of the first game revamp skill system interesting more i don't really play games like this where it's like bird eye view i don't have much experience I used to try secure sometime when not swarmed with other games i know right it is on my list oh i saw this clip um or like short and it's a skit and it's someone playing like a dad and a child and the child's playing Elden Ring and trying to like beat the game and is having a hard time. And he's like, Dad, can you beat this boss for me? 
and then the dad's like you gotta do it yourself part of the journey part of the experience is that you try again and again and you get good and you be the boss and you learn you learn patience and persistence yeah and then the kid's like okay dad and it's like yes and then you can become an elden lord and it's like yeah dad i'll become an elden lord and then i'll play sekiro and then that's like uh oh <laughs> That's how the show ends. And am I being that kid right now? I don't know. I don't know. Flexibility and character building. New classes, new equipment, new challenges, new, new, new. Uh, new Path new. of Exile was a great game. I am absolutely looking forward to a sequel to it. It's free to play. It's multiplayer. It's basically oh. Diablo, but not Blizzard. So, oh. <laughs> I mean, there's good reasons oh, to play it, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, people who like Diablo. I can see them liking this, taking interest That's in That's not it. really fair to the original Path of it. It's not just straight up a Diablo clone, but it's very much in that realm, and it's very good. I'm excited for Diablo, this. Diablo, but not Blizzard. So And number 21 is Where Winds Meet, yeah. an open world action RPG set in ancient China. You're a wandering hero in a historical fiction wow. that will see us yes. on a little jaunt like through scene. Chinese That's folklore. Cool. Uh, got very fluid, acrobatic is, is, is that our maiden? <laughs> combat, um, a beautifully crafted world from everything we've seen currently. I'm pretty Beautiful excited setting. for this one. It's a different looking open world oh, action wow, RPG. So cool. at least Beautiful setting for where, sure. I don't know. In some ways, I think that the combat looks absolutely fun as hell. But what it's is got this that game? beautiful kind of Whoa, ghost of Shush scary. But it's also Whoa, got that cool, beautiful though. kind of ghost of Sushima style <laughs> sensibility to it. We don't have a release date, but uh, uh, I mean, it's wildly. What is this called again? I'm certainly excited to see where it goes. Me too. We'll let you know as soon as we know more. Wait, hold on. What is that He's called that again? This hell is where it's a drafted very fiction EG in that realm and it's very Doesn't good that look i'm cool. excited for this Winds i'm gonna watch that again open world action rpg set in china. china you're so a wandering cool. hero in a historical fiction that will see My us main on a little jaunt through chinese folklore uh got very fluid acrobatic combat um a beautifully crafted world from everything we've seen currently. I'm pretty excited <laughs> for this one. It's a different looking open world action RPG Teleport. in at least enough ways zap, where, zap. I don't know, in some ways I think that the combat looks absolutely fun as hell, but it's got that beautiful kind of ghost of Shush, but it's also got that beautiful kind of ghost of Sushima style <laughs> sensibility to it. Ghost we don't have shush. a release date, but uh, I mean, it's wildly ambitious, and I'm certainly that, excited to see looks where it goes. Cool. We'll let you know. As yeah, soon as that's more. going on the wish list. Actually, I'm going to add it right now because uh, my m memory sucks. I don't know if it's even listed where when is it? <laughs> it's not listed on Steam yet. Gotta wait. Ghost of Shush. Yeah, it's not listed yet. Man, and the fact that though it made me open my Steam app, looking for it. Survival and sign. upcoming survival horror game set in medieval times. Um, not necessarily historically accurate medieval times. Uh, there's a deadly plague out. You're gonna be out scavenging for resources, crafting weapons, etc., etc. Obviously, it's survival. Well, long, yeah, I've heard of that but, too. Uh, I mean, it's medieval zombies. I told you it's not historically accurate. No release date yet, but it's definitely one I've got my eye very close on. At number 19 is Kingmakers, a game that I think, frankly, is a great idea. It's you mm. traveling back in time to a sandbox action strategy, and you got modern weapons. And I guess modern vehicles as well. I mean, this is a totally crazy looking game. Oh, and it's everything I've heard I about this. This is. want <laughs> in the premise that has been given. This like, I can't so... wait to play this game. It's going to enter early Silly. access sometime later in the year. It's My medieval time overlapped with modern combat. guys are combat. so glued to this one. And number 18 is Light No Fire, Hello Games follow-up to No Man's Sky. Uh, Ooh, a lot of familiar so elements insane. here. You got a procedurally generated world. Uh, it is not... They don't they just drive a car through people, yeah. Serious troll, yeah. But are they riding on the bird? Multiple worlds, oh, it's cool. on one world. One world allegedly the size of Earth. It's multiplayer from day one. And there's oh. going to be a big focus on um, atmosphere. 
and environmental oh, storytelling. That was beautiful. It's interesting because there's going to be manipulation of Look light and shadow in order to progress uh, <gasps> in terms of like revealing hidden paths and getting this somewhere. Will hit? I think it's going to be a pretty interesting puzzle oriented, puzzle. procedurally generated exploration game. I think Hello Games is on the right track. Uh, they obviously learned a lot with how oh. No Man's Sky went. And I'm excited to play this one. So they don't have a release date, but uh, yeah, Light No Fire looks great. Though. And number 17 is Clockwork Revolution. Hey, remember Bioshock Infinite? Thinking about my money, I'm like, <laughs> getting so the chassis. Bioshock. Well, here's a game that looks like it continues a lot of the ideas that were there with your time travel, steampunk, Victorian robot nightmare flipping out on all, all over the place. You got some baddie running a city. You got a fighter. You got to take her okay. down. And all the retro futurism technology and potential for storytelling. It's all here. I can't wait to play this. This is interesting. I loved Bioshock Infinite. Obviously, Sucks. this isn't the people who uh, made Bioshock Infinite. But don't tell me that's not what they're aiming for here. Setup. No oh, release date. But hell, it's going to be good. I think anyway. Wow. Did, was that like a reverse time? So the bridge broke down and then you put it back. Love steampunk. Yeah. Yeah, steampunk. Looked very cool. Too broke. I know. Games are so expensive nowadays. It's insane. I basically don't pick them up unless they go on sale now. Unless I really, really, really badly want to play when it hasn't been out for that long. And number 16 is Unrecord, a uh, tactical narrative first-person wow. shooter that describes itself... This almost feels like uh, like watching through like a webcam, like a like a self like cam like go cam as a combination of ready or not the tactical shooter and, and this is where i think it starts getting very weird firewatch see the interesting thing about firewatch is it's about what you can convince yourself is this there this is such an interesting like camera vision i saw this game before people were talking about how realistic yeah it kind of looks like you're you, they have like a go cam or something like a on their helmet and you're looking through that isn't and they've described this game as kind of similar to a detective novel or a thr thriller and uh, obviously it's a first person shooter with a body camera scary. it looks really realistic and yeah. very tense i'm excited for it there's no release oh, date but um obviously it's an exciting project. It looks so real. And number 15 is Little Devil Inside, an action-adventure RPG that has been a long time in the making. This game... Look, we all won. Little Devil Inside, an action-adventure RPG. Look at that. Wait, I'm covering it. I'm so sorry. See? <laughs> little, little guys here. RPG that has been a long time in the making. This game is one of those uh, Kickstarters from 2015 it's that did incredibly charming. well and raised way more money than it intended to and ended up expanding its scope pretty significantly and that has resulted in it being a much bigger project than originally intended. It's a very different looking game, very minimalist looking, set in a surreal open world environment with a lot of quests that are oriented around oh, no. the mysteries of the world. Little Devil Inside, it doesn't oh, have a release date yet. It's, it's one of those games that's been in the works for so long and it's such an interesting project Violent. it's more worth just understanding that it probably will release this year and crossing your fingers such an interesting art style for and number sure 14 is home world yeah. 3, developed by blackbird and the starting scene was charming but it just it definitely stands out published by gearbox real-time strategy and space i mean that's what home world is and you got a whole lot more of it it looks much bigger much better with big epic battles and it really looks like it uh, takes advantage of modern hardware. This is a really pretty looking game. Uh, they've been working on it since 2017. They actually crowdfunded it. And it looks like it's going to land in your grubby little hands on May 13th. Or the 10th with advanced Grubby. access. Grubby and little number 13 hand. is Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. A sequel mm. to the 2004 game, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, um, developed by the Chinese Room. Set in modern day Seattle. I mean, in every way, it looks like they're attempting to follow up what we saw in the first game, except for modern and working. 
completely. This was a quirky game when it came out, and a sequel to it now is a very interesting <sighs> prospect. No. It's been 20 years. Sensibilities have changed. Technological possibilities have changed. This is a classic, and it'll be really interesting to see. Are you how a vampire updates, running around biting people? To uh. be specific, it is coming this year. We don't have an exact date, but uh, stay tuned. Interesting. And number 12 is the first Ooh. Berserker, Kazan. It, what it is calling itself a hardcore action RPG. Let's set in the see. universe of Dungeon and Fighter. It's a story of vengeance uh, after being falsely accused of treason. The whole point oh. is to reclaim Kazan's honor and glory. Uh, you got hack and slash combat. Apparently a little more difficult than your typical hack and slash. Um, and <laughs> this anime art style that it has is very distinct. Uh, obviously, we've seen a million games with a quote uh, anime art style, but you the immediately know will love that it's this, this game. Even if you don't know the name of it, it sticks Let's out like a anime sore thumb. So I'm interested to play this one. It doesn't have a release date like so many of the games on this list, but it is coming in 2024. Whoa. And number cool. 11 is Banishers Ghosts of New Eden, an action RPG by <laughs> Don't Nod, which is, of course, known for very Isn't different kind of off-kilter games. It's a love story between uh, a ghost hunter and his partner who is now dead and therefore a ghost uh, who Such was a ghost hunter setup. now is, you know, on the other end of things. Basically, you're using the living guy's arsenal of attacks and the dead woman's spiritual powers to battle supernatural forces. It's a good game. It came out earlier in the month and uh, honestly, I thought pretty solid game. Steam reviews uh, completely agree. Definitely okay. worth the money. At number 10 is Tomb Raider 1 to 3 Remastered. <laughs> hey, you interested in the old Tomb Raider games? Do you want to see them? Um, not is look Tomb brand Raider new, fun? but look a little bit better. Still retaining a look that's very faithful. I've not played a single Tomb Raider game, but kind of interested. It was good for its time. A lot of games in the series, but... If it's like sneaking into like hidden buildings and you figure out puzzles and stuff, it just sounds like something I would enjoy. Pull to the original. Uh, if that's something that sounds good, then uh, yeah, this is exactly what you want. Because it's those games, warts and all. Uh, they do include a Let's modern go. control method. I imagine which is the people who grew up playing this game, they must be so hype to see this. Controls better. Decent. Oh, but it was not good before given the way the game is made, can be a little troublesome. You can also switch uh, between the new graphics and the completely old graphics at any oh, time, cool. which is really cool. Yeah. It also includes a bunch of the expansion pack content from Nostalgia the original games. Nostalgia makes it so easy for people to swap back and forth and enjoy their nostalgic game. Um, I think this was a hell of a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this remaster. Again, came out early in uh, February. It's gotten a lot of very good press and feedback, and I think deservedly so. It's, it's so I mean, funny, exactly though. what it says it is. It is running like old... that in form of a dinosaur. Yeah, nostalgia strong. I watched my dad play it when I was remade. Cute. Cool ass remaster. Oh, <gasps> you can play this with him. At number nine is Routine, a first-person sci-fi horror game set in a retro-futuristic lunar base. It's interesting. Uh, you end up looking like the bad guy to the bad guy. The bad guy being the robots, which, by the way, are super freaky and weird. They move strange. They look strange. Uh -huh. Everything about this game is just super aesthetically like cool as hell. I am really excited to play this one. It doesn't have a release date, but uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure this one's going to be a really good game. Oh. And number eight is Once Human, a multiplayer open world survival game set in a post-apocalyptic future. It's a really interesting looking game. There's this looks like, um, it reminds me of Stray. Like the characters I saw in Stray. Some freaky looking stuff in it, but it also has a lot of like very standard survival game looking wow. stuff. And then you see these massive monsters or these floating ghosty looking enemies. Everything about it is crazy looking. And then you also see like, hey, you can build a pretty normal looking house. Once <laughs> Human looks honestly cool as hell. It looks like a good take on a survival game. It's coming out uh, in the fall and That's I'm definitely going to be paying close attention to it. And number seven is Pal World. They really created like their own world, it looks like. 
Ark Survival with Guns and Pokemon. No way, uh, multiplayer Power open world, world survival and crafting game. An extremely well-reviewed game that people really love the hell do, out of. Do people still play this? When it came out, literally everybody was playing. But I don't really see people streaming it that much anymore. And some people really hate for reasons that everybody else doesn't really care about at all. It's currently <laughs> in early access. It's definitely worth your time. And they're continuing to work on it and expand on it. There's going to be new content in a couple months. Is it like hate from like hardcore Pokemon fan maybe? I mean, this is a cool game, regardless of what a lot of people have said about it. Um, they're definitely not the majority. There's 235,000 people that have reviewed it, and it is maintaining a 93% rating. So, But if Pokemon comes out with a game like this, it will, it will go crazy, and it will not die out because of the hardcore Pokemon fan, too, I think. Well done to Pocket Pair on that game. Good job, guys. And number six is Avowed, an action RPG that looks a lot like a more action-y Skyrim. Skyrim. It takes place in the same uh, world as Pillars of Eternity. It's interesting because it was originally going to be in the same way the Outer Worlds is kind of Obsidian's Fallout or Starfield or somewhere in between those. This is basically going to be that same thing with Skyrim. Uh, a smaller scope, but a much bigger focus on story. I think that's the right way to go. Obsidian, I have always maintained, is Bethesda without the bloat. And honestly, as much as I like what Bethesda does in terms of ambition, I generally like Obsidian's games better. They also made the best Fallout of all time, New Vegas. Avowed is going to be cool. It's an Unreal Engine 5 game. It's coming out uh, quarter three, quarter four this year, so look out for it. And number five is Black Myth Wukong, yeah. an action RPG based on Journey to the West. You're playing at Sun Wukong, the Monkey King. You're going to be battling so a bunch cool. of mythical creatures. And if you know the story of Journey to the West, you know basically what this is going to be. If you don't, it's a classic Chinese novel. It has to do a lot with Chinese history. It's kind of a fictionalization slash interpretation of yeah. real events. In China. There's even like a cartoon, kids cartoon series based on like the... The Monkey King, or I think they're called. I remember watching like a Korean cartoon series, and there was like the Monkey King, and like a pig, and like another character. It's like a, it's just like a well-known story, well-known character. Yeah, Dragon Ball also has like some some of that element too. China. It's a super interesting thing. It takes way too long to explain. I'm looking forward to this game. It looks real cool. Yeah, I, it's coming I out on August 20th, so look out for that. And number four is the this summer, 2024 summer. We're getting some great games. Fable reboot, an upcoming action RPG developed by Playground Games. Ooh, this it's game set in the Living beautiful. Lands, a uh, part of the world of Eora. Players will assume control of an envoy of the Aider Empire, and you're going to investigate a mysterious plague. It's gonna be an interesting game because it's been a long time since fable and fable is obviously no longer a peter molyneux thing it's a microsoft thing and it'll be really interesting to see where they go with it that's coming out in either fall or winter of this year and this one and number i'm like i'm kind of interested in that one it looks really cool number three is pacific drive a supernatural like it has like a little like thumbelina vibe to it too a survival game where you have to drive around in a station wagon and not die in all of the crazy crap happening a lot of this game takes place driving which i think is great because a lot of survival games have other mechanics but don't really focus on them this is a big supernatural thing with storms that are life-threatening you have to nurse your car back to health a whole bunch a lot of the time it's a super interesting game and a great take on survival highly recommend it give it a mm -hmm. shot it's out now and number two is Helldivers 2, a game that takes Let's the original top-down shooter, puts it in third person, and amps everything up to 11. It looks like a worthy sequel of the original Helldivers, which came out way back in 2015. It's been a while, and I think... I'm not much of a shooter's game player, but I think that one of the things that stands out in this game, or makes this seem like more approachable game is it's like shooters but also it feels silly at the same time it's not like shooters it's like so serious you 
you can die you can just respawn you can do silly things with your friends it's just feel and then like the whole dialogue and like the whole like story behind it for democracy like it's a silly it's like if you take it too seriously you're being stupid that's how i feel it doesn't take itself seriously at all yeah it's like a shooter's game that even people who doesn't really usually like shooter's game could still enjoy you can set your bestie on fire yeah <laughs> This was the right direction to go with it. Helldivers 2 is a really cool game. It's so Tons cool of game. The, the like emotes and stuff you can do with reason. friends is so really cool fun too. Game. I would definitely say if the footage even looks even vaguely appealing to you, it's probably something you'll like. It does what it does really well. And finally, at number one is oh, Dragon's no Dogma way. 2. This is a game. I knew that they were going to mention this, but I didn't expect it to be a number one. How timely. We've been talking about a long ass time. We were watching the original the came out just way back earlier. in 2012. It wasn't really a instant hit, obviously. It sold all right, but it racked up a massive cult following over the years, and people are really excited for it. Let's go. Capcom said going back to it, uh, the whole idea I'm was basically sold. to do stuff that was technologically not possible oh, in the cool. original, Ice and shield. also do all of the buggy stuff in the original, not buggy. You can expect all of the good stuff from the original, including the combat system, and some expansions that look pretty awesome. Dragon's cool. Dogma 2 is coming out March 22nd. And very that's all soon. for today. Leave us a comment. Very, very soon. You think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, it's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable subscribe. notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching subscribe. this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time, right here on Game Ranks. So many, so many games this year. Ugh. First world problem.